Road Wars follows an elite unit from the Thames Valley Police. Using high-performance unmarked cars equipped with the latest technology... Passing traffic speed, 70 miles per hour. ..the two-man crews of the proactive team are on the front line against criminals. Get on the floor! Covering the whole of the Thames Valley, the crack proactive team target crime hotspots. Whenever and wherever there's a problem, the elite officers are called in to sort it out. Simon Hills and Chris Piggott, Tango Victor 3-1, are on patrol in Aylesbury. Yes, yes, any AVs on it, sorry? They've spotted some unusual activity on an estate and have parked up to see if it's a gang of drug dealers at work. So they've dropped somebody off now in that vehicle. In the last hour, they've repeatedly seen this grey Saab creeping around the area. What do you want to do, stop the Saab or...? Like other police just scored. I reckon he has just scored because he's got that look about him. There is something not right. They think the car's now loaded with drugs and decide to shadow it in their unmarked car. Right, I'll go and I'll just do a casual one on the driver. OK, perhaps you want to speak with him, the bloke in the back and get him out and search him. Just have that feeling that they're going to be nervous, a nervous spurt of acceleration to try and get away from us. Mate, your boy's seen us in the mirror. Sussed by the occupants, Simon doesn't yeah, want to waste any up. more time. All seems to be going to plan. Told you. Perhaps not. Uh, wait one for direction on to a roundabout. Vehicle is three up, three IC1 males. We're Oxford Road at this time, approaching uh, Gatehouse Way roundabout. Vehicle continues A418 towards Stone at this time. Vehicle passing traffic on the off side of the road, speed 70 miles per hour. Desperate to get away, the driver breaks every rule in the book, leaving Simon struggling to keep up in the heavy traffic. Come on, get out the way. All the proactive team are specially trained for pursuit driving, but Simon has to be careful. The fugitive could cause a horrific accident if pushed too hard. The vehicle has now entered stone. Uh, we're six zero miles per hour. Drugs have gone out the window at the offside turn with Hartwell House. A wrap of uh, something has gone into the road there. As we believe these males have just done a tr drug transaction outside uh, Roland Way. Having ditched his drug stash, the driver boots it even harder. And now Simon's bolt. <laughs> Come on! 3 1, a temporary loss uh, into stone. They might have done a left here, mate. With the driver out of sight, Simon and Chris gamble on turning left at the next junction. Any marks? Any mark? No, but I reckon you will have done, mate. Tango Victor 3 1, we've got an absolute total loss. Uh, we went left towards Church Way. I believe the vehicle has either travelled straight on or gone right. That was the maddest driving I've seen for yeah. a long, long time. I was going to... I was probably 10 seconds away from calling it off, mate. With outrageous manoeuvres like this, the driver's lucky just to have lost the police and not his life. Knowing the car will soon be abandoned, Simon and Chris give out a full description of the fleeing blokes. B1, uh, just to appraise you, I do have a description of the rear occupant of the vehicle. I see one male, approximately 5 foot 10 to 5 foot 11 in height, slim build, and he was wearing blue jeans which had a, a large faded white patch uh, three quarters of the way across the rear of the legs. What would you give the driver as? 40 odd? Yeah, I'd reckon I was a driver, I think, if I saw him again. He, he struck me as a bit of a sort of fat overweight. Yeah. Within eight minutes, the deserted Saab's found in a country village, but an extensive search fails to track down the occupants. Right, it turned out the Saab was stolen and running on cloned plates, the sign of serious criminals. Forensic tests on the vehicle later link the car to a known drugs gang from a northern city. In Lancashire, police are also hot on the heels of a stolen car, this red Vectra. The driver's trying to leave the officers for dust by blasting through a maze of residential roads. 
but leading the cops around the houses doesn't get him anywhere fast. So he leaves the road and pelts through a pedestrian underpass. He's out of sight, but he's left a track. And up ahead, brake lights. It seems the fugitives crashed, but the thief reverses and just makes the corner. This lap, he nearly hits a pedestrian before racing through the same underpass, over the park, through the second subway, and back out onto the track again. Unable to outdrive the police, he tries to monkey over a garden wall. Too late, he's instantly nicked. And if nicking cars and speeding through residential roads wasn't bad enough, police later found a wrap of heroin in his socks. The plank was later sentenced to 18 months in sand. In Cleveland, this getaway driver is trying to escape the cop car on the left by driving on the wrong side of the A19, one of the busiest roads in the northeast. It's one of the most dangerous scenarios the police can face in a pursuit. The officers need to stop the driver quickly before he causes a major collision, a real danger with such a donut at the wheel. Up ahead, a squad car has managed to stop some traffic, but it's still too risky to strike. You do have fair. Uh Vehicles heading the correct direction, however, very, very light. For now, they bide their time as a police helicopter monitors the oncoming traffic. After your next car, it is clear. Traffic uh, is going to be stopped. The airborne crew spots the road is now clear and the pursuing patrol car pounces. Yeah, earlier the uh, vehicle has slowed down, the other vehicle is alongside. It's a textbook manoeuvre, with minimum damage and no injuries. Uh, arrest. Arrest imminent. 23 people were killed in accidents caused by fugitive drivers last year. Top training and tactics managed to stop this dangerous lawbreaker and prevent a catastrophe. Monday morning. Charlie Etheridge and Chris Ruff, Tango Victor 3-2, have just left base when they get an urgent call about a break-in. Let's call Holker. That sounds like a good little village to go through. Tango Victor 3-2. Hi, it's Mike Ridgeway, you behind. Hello, sir. Distraction break just come in. Right. Right, OK, we'll make to that immediately then. All right, guys. All right, thank you. Yeah, thanks for the call, boss. Cheers, bye. There's been a spate of burglaries in Chesham, and all the proactive units are called in to join the hunt for the crims. Yeah, 3132, redeploy, redeploy, Chesham bound. Um, the name of the road is in Chesham. They've just had another distraction. Right, okay, well done. Okay, see you in a bit. Bye. Arriving in Chesham, it's not long before the pair spot a suspicious motor. Yeah, I think it's a possible contender. The vehicle's two up, scrappy looking car. It's um, reported as being in trade. There's basically no details, no information on, on who the, uh, the owner of the vehicle might be, which is something that these sort of people do, make it, make it difficult to trace any vehicle. So we'll have a word with them and see how we get on. They follow it into a petrol station and decide to have a chat with the driver. The vehicle's currently shown as not having a keeper. That's what I stopped to speak to you about. Yeah, I've only just pulled it. Have you? Yeah, 250 quid. It's tax, Lovely. it's MOT. It's worth 250 quid of anyone's money. You know what I mean? I've Obviously. had it about a week. I've sent them out with a little book. Yep. What, what insurance have you got for it? I've got third party farm theft on this. Good, list. if you just tell me who it's with, I'll give them a ring and... and um... I, I can't remember, sir. I've only had it a week. And I've only just done it. Only bought the car a week ago and can't remember the insurance company. It's not a good start. What will happen is if you can't prove to me who your insurance is with, I'll seize the car. Well, I so I can't do it here, I'm saying. So. Well, yeah, I know, but you must have a rough idea of who you've insured it with. To crack down on illegal drivers, police now have the power to seize the car of anyone driving without insurance or a licence. Threatened with the loss of his wheels, the bloke suddenly seems to remember the name of his insurance company. Okay. From the place up in London. Yep. And I've got it off of my mate Fudge. Fudge. 
Fudge's insurance, good. Fudge's insurance? More like fudging the facts, but there's a new twist. I can't prove it to us unless I go home. If you want to take the car, I'll fudge it. I'll just take my stuff out the back of it. Okay, that's fine. That's what we'll do then. What a polite gentleman. He says that he can't prove that he's got no insurance on the vehicle at the moment, so he's more than willing to give up his vehicle and uh, take his stuff out the back and walk home. Unbelievable. The guy only bought his car a week ago, but now he's happy to give it up and call a cab. You get yourself your, your taxi organised, whatever you need to do, and then... Uh, Sorry? Yeah, because that cost more, won't it? Checking the police computer, Charlie may have found the answer to why the bloke's so keen to dump his car. Got details showing this gentleman's an expired substantive licence holder. Was he? Yeah. Basically, he's had a, a full licence at some stage, probably lost it through um, being disqualified. Basically, he's not reapplied for his uh, licence, which you have to do as part of your disqualification, which means basically you shouldn't be driving the car on the road. Just take your head out of the car for one minute and I'll explain what we need to do. Right, OK, just stand still for a minute, OK, because it's important, OK? Right. Our records show that you've got an expired substantive licence. No, my licence is not expired, so it's not been reapplied for a right. difference, OK? OK, so you've not reapplied for your licence then, basically. What DVLA will require you to do is um, reapply for the licence in order to drive back on the road and they'll reissue you with a licence. So what's going to happen is you're going to be reported for the consideration of the question of prosecuting you for the offence okay. of driving with an expired substantive licence, OK? I don't mind paying for that, you know what I'm saying? If I haven't been applied for it, then if there's a penalty for it, then I'll have to pay that. I've got no problem with it. Right. Yeah, much the bloke's just admitted that he's got no driving licence. No insurance company in the world will cover him, but he still seems to think he's insured. You're convinced I haven't got any insurance. Yeah. And I'd love you to be beyond the counter when I bring it in. I really would. Do you want to take your insurance into the police station, do you? I'm going to take it in the All right, place, let's, all right. I'll give you one of these then so it can get back to me so you can. Well, I don't mind. Even if everything works out and perfectly okay, mm -hmm. it's still going to cost me. Yeah, I mean, I'm yeah that's right. Making... Yeah. And at the end of the day, that's a bit harsh on the person. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, it's yeah, it's yeah your, your meter's running. Which is a bit, bit harsh on you. It's up to 120 quid now already. <laughs> I like the way he gets in the front and the big chap gets in the back. The driver was not connected to the burglaries, but was later charged with driving without a proper licence and insurance. His car was crushed. Eighty per cent of all crime is committed by a small group of persistent crooks. In Milton Keynes, a special operation is underway to crack down on the local underworld. Chris and Simon are on the Pennylands estate, helping to execute a warrant. As they wait, Chris is suspicious of an odd smell coming from across the street. Definitely quite a strong smell of cannabis. So, I'd... oh, it's quite strong up here. We've just come to do an address check for somebody else that's wanted in the area and um, drug sniffer Chris, as he's come round the corner, him and the other officer, a trip of, of smelt what they thought was cannabis. It's this place here, mate, the smell, the smell in there, it's in there. Yeah, it stinks. We've tracked it down, and this address here, absolutely reeks of it. There's movement at the back of the house. Those lights that I said have just gone out of the back. But that curtain definitely moved. Is that a wall or is that a blind as well? It looks like it's been boarded up. All the windows are boarded up, not the sign of an average family home. To me, that looks like it's blocked off as well, mate. Do you know what I mean? Look. They think they're onto something serious. And Chris radios the control room for backup. We're unsure as to whether or not anyone's in the premise at the moment, so we're just um, playing it by ear, keeping it contained, and then um, we'll go in and see if it, if it is cannabis. All the Tango Victor units are specially trained for rapid entry. Chris quickly kits himself out to take on the door. I don't think we're going to lose anything. No, we're not going to lose anything. I just don't want to... Can you um, strap me in? I don't want anyone getting hurt. So, have you got a long sleeve top you can put on? Yeah, I've got it. I'm going to put my face on over it. Suddenly, there's movement inside. I'll cover that, because it's what I'll get out the back. Right, that door's just open, mate. If anyone comes out, they're going to need uh, nicking straight away. I don't know if you saw that, but the back door's just opened, uh, shut and been locked. Right, here we go. I'm not quite sure what we're going to have in here. It's Chris Oakman. Right, ready? Put the warning in. Open the door, please! Keys are in it, keys are in it. 
case in here, mate. Can you sort the case? Hang on, let me just do this bit. Continue with that, I'll do the back. Leaving Simon at the front, Chris keeps the pressure on by starting on the back. <laughs> Finally, they're in. A lone woman is cuffed and arrested straight away. But what's the source of the sweet whiff? Whoa! There's enough weed here to keep you going for a little while. The house is a huge cannabis farm. Five rooms have been converted into hot houses. Each is equipped with powerful UV lights and sophisticated ventilation systems to grow cannabis from seeds. Ah, oh, they're only baby plants. To high yielding, fully grown, resin producing plants. You see the extent of what we've got here, this is the rubbish bin, and they've chucked away, you know, a load of obviously what they think is rubbish stuff. I mean, it smells out of the street. One of the neighbours has noticed it, and no one else knows it. I'll never know. Altogether, there are more than 650 plants in the house. It's enough to produce a staggering 25 grand's worth of cannabis every week. Due to these high yields, cannabis factories are mushrooming across the UK, and police now raid three of them every day. If that doesn't typify Chris Piggott, I don't know what does, because we were walking up and down that, that road there, and we could smell it, and uh, then Chris has come up the alleyway here, and he's got his bloodhound nose out yet again, and... Um, has smelt the cannabis and well, what a cracking result. I mean, that justifies why we're here. I would say, uh, police one, drug dealers nil. The woman found in the house was later given two years in prison for running the illegal cannabis factory. Amazingly, she'd just been let out for a similar offence. In Middlesbrough, plainclothes officers are checking a back alley when they surprise a dealer picking up his stash from a hiding place. Realising it's the police, not clients, the bloke leaves his drugs and legs it. His athleticism was in vain. He's quickly nabbed and the drugs removed. Chris, it's a straight, straight, straight. In nearby Redcar, undercover cops are shadowing a green Vauxhall Astra. Can I confirm, November 506, Charlie Mike Bravo. Coming in. Coming in. Yeah, I'm behind it now. The moat has been brutally stolen at knife point earlier in the day. <laughs> it was an extremely violent carjacking, and the cops are now eager to stop this dangerous criminal. The second unit joins the pursuit behind the first unmarked police car. He's on the bill, the bill heading towards uh, Eastbourne Road shops. The second cop car continues straight on in an attempt to cut off the criminal. But the crook realises he's trapped, so jumps from the car and runs. In all the chaos, he forgets his bewildered girlfriend. The carjacker turned out to be a well-known dealer. High on drugs, he was found hiding in a nearby garden, arrested and sentenced to 18 months in prison. It's past midnight in Milton Keynes, and it's all quiet as Simon and Chris patrol the local estates. Suddenly, the pair spot a dark BMW parked up by a play area. Hello. All right, gents. How are we doing? What are you up to? Cannabis. Hand it over. Yeah, where's the split then? Where's the cannabis? It's the in your hand. It's in your hand. You're holding a rope to it at the moment, my old friend. Open your hand. Open your hand up. Where is it then? No, it's on the, it's on the uh, centre console. Step out for me, please, mate. Just stand in the crease of the door there, for me, please. Just stand what? facing the crease of the door. How old are you, lot? Have you got any more cannabis How old in your are pockets? You? 19. You? You've been in trouble with the police before? You have. What for? Oh, no, no. Never. Right, OK. If all you've got is a bit of personal on you, and that's all you're doing down here, if you hand it over now, we'll deal with it here. You got any on you? Yeah, Truth. Yeah, you're, gonna, you're gonna get searched, all right? Yeah, Hang on, wait. Have you checked this boy? Yeah. 
What's in this? Oh, I can't give you more cannabis, that's it. Right, well, you just told me some fibs there, didn't you? No, that was it. Well, that's yours then, isn't it? Okay, then. Have you got any board yet? In contrast to many urban myths, cannabis is still an illegal substance. So Simon tries to find out from the other two who actually owns the bag of weed. Which one of you gentlemen does this cannabis belong to that was in the car? Somebody's going to have to up for it, otherwise all three of you get end up down the police station. That's the way it works. Have you got a conviction for cannabis, have you? English. Sorry? English, otherwise no, you get nicked. To him, mate. I don't give a toss who you're talking to. You're talking English, mate, while I'm here. So I'm dealing with a criminal offence. All oh, right, OK, OK. You carry on, then. Right, you carry on. What was he saying? I was saying, whose cannabis is it? It's, it's all of us. Right. He's just smoking it, mate. That's what it is. Yeah. It's still a controlled substance, though, isn't it? It's still illegal to possess it. Is it? Yeah. I thought you are allowed to smoke it. No. How can you smoke it if it's illegal to possess it? I don't know, mate. That's what people say, do you know what I mean? Right. Well, they're wrong. So whose is it? It's Who bought it? It's all three of us. Huh? It's all three of us. It's all three of yours. Well, he's already got his own little portion. See, there is a way of dealing with this at the roadside. For anybody who hasn't got any previous convictions or cautions, yeah. you get an official well, warning on the street. I know it's wrong. I'm telling you, it's all of us. We're all chipped in to buy it. Right. So it's all, it's all to do with us, isn't it, really? Because we all chipped in a little bit of money to buy it. Right, so who went and bought it? We were, what, did you all, oh, all three oh, of you oh, go there yeah. and hold hands? Nah. <laughs> do, I look, do I look gay? I look gay. <laughs> No, I, no I, I wasn't there. I was scared the money. I wasn't there. But... So who was there? Were you there? Yeah, I was there. Right, so it's yours then, in no, effect? No, it's not mine. I was in the car. So whose is it? It's one of our friends gave us to him. Gave it, gave it to who? No, no, not gave it to us. We bought, we bought it from the street, basically. That's what it is. Right, so who bought it? All three of us went. <laughs> <laughs> no one's got the guts to cough up, and Simon's getting tired of this spineless show. One of you have it. Or you both come into custody. If I admit you, it, I bought it, yeah. I don't want somebody to admit something they haven't done. I want somebody to be truthful with me and tell me who's possessing it. Pull my chain. Right. It's more like it, isn't it? Realising he's only being cautioned, one bloke decides to push for a better deal. So, and you're going to get that back? No, it doesn't quite work either. Nice try, but no returns here. It's a caution for him and the geezer searched by Chris. The third bloke is free to go. In Georgia, America, a trooper pulls over a car for weaving through traffic. Sir, step on back here with your license for me, please. He suspects the driver's been drinking. How are you doing this evening? All right. Tell the reason I'm stopping you, you're weaving over the roadway there. Okay. I ain't been drinking. You ain't had nothing to drink? You don't have anything in your pockets, do no. you? I don't know what you have in your pockets. If you don't mind, just leave your hands out for me. Okay? You haven't had anything to drink? Is this your car? No, my wife. Your wife? Where's your wife at? She's at home. The bloke acts and looks sober, but strangely enough, he's still got a few problems speaking clearly. Open your mouth. Put that out your mouth. Sir. What do you have in your mouth? The driver claims it's all down to a big chunk of chocolate in his mouth, but the cop cuffs him to find out what he's really got there. Spit that out on the car. Spit it out. Spit it out. Spit it out on the car. Spit it out on the car. But the driver just doesn't want to give up his sweets and starts to struggle. Stay where you're at. Don't you move. You understand me? Don't, don't you move. The second cop is immediately on scene. He's gone. Just put him in the back. Facing a night in the slammer, the driver finally admits what's in his mouth. All you ate was a joint. Yes, sir. You gone through all this for a silly joint? In contrast to Britain, anyone caught for a second time in Georgia with a tiny amount of cannabis faces up to one year in prison. All the officers on the proactive team are highly streetwise. With years of experience between them, they've got a sharp eye for anything out of the ordinary, their own criminal radar. On patrol in Bracknell, Charlie and Ruffy spot a passing car carrying a bunch of blokes they've seen lurking around a local supermarket. They decide to stop them and in case of trouble, have called in Chris and Simon as backup. With everyone in position, they quickly pull the car over. Hello, how are you? Do you speak English? 
Yes. A little bit, yeah, okay. Just come out the vehicle. Okay. Reason we stopped you yeah. is vehicles on one of our databases to speak to the occupants. Eastern European, isn't it? What? Where do you live? Uh, I live in London. London? Yeah. What brings you to Bracknell, though? Yeah. What brings you to Bracknell? <laughs> Sorry. What brings you here? I was to, to see maybe I find one, one lake. I'm, I like fishing, you know? Right? Yeah. Next week I was to Kent to, to fishing. Right. And I like to fishing. I, I tried to find a lake, I think. Right. Fishing? The team now cast their own net and question the four occupants of the car. As they do, Chris spots his man trying to conceal a videotape. Drop it, whatever he's got. Something's definitely not right. Now another bloke's trying to hide something. Drop it, whatever he's got. He's trying to slip um, something into his coat. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it's sort of a little piece of electrical equipment. I believe it's something that they've used to work on the cash point machine. The team is now convinced they're dealing with a gang of cash machine fraudsters. Right, you've been arrested on suspicion of um, theft. Go and equip for theft. You don't have to say anything. I've seen this old boy here as we've um, we've been in Sainsbury's before. I know so. Uh, they've obviously been in and around the supermarket for some time. This type of device is usually hidden inside a false fascia of a cash point to copy or skim your card details as you withdraw your hard-earned cash. Charlie then makes another discovery. I will take it out of the bag for the sake of fingerprints. But you can see in there, there's a fascia in this bag, which is they've had clamped to the front of the, uh, the machine, and it's, uh, it's exceptionally good. I mean, that would fool me. And I'd like to think I do know a little bit about the world and what's going on in it. But exceptionally good copy, so uh, resounding result. So what part does the video play in all of this? This lad here was trying to conceal a DV cam from me in a cigarette packet. I saw him trying to dump it down the side of the uh, seat. I imagine what they were doing is videoing people and getting their PIN numbers. So all this will be seized. Uh, it's a real, real tasty job, this. Really nice to get so like this. Well done to the bearded wonder for spotting it. Yeah, I'm very happy. I'm very happy. What's added weight to it is the fact that They've been put up doing three jobs at cash points in Bedfordshire. All this vehicle has it's four Eastern European looking males. We've just seen the vehicle coming out of Sainsbury's. At the moment I saw the driver, I knew I'd seen him hanging about this Sainsbury's petrol station. In the car door, super glue and spare batteries, but there's one final piece of the card crooks kit still to come. What we've got there in the newspaper wrapped up is a very simple device, which is part of that fascia, which they, is made. Cut the Duracell batteries, little camera, that reads the pin number, records it all down, and then come away with all your details, and everyone's cards are cloned. I mean, God knows how many people's uh, cards they would have had away and how many pin numbers they've got. Come jump in. All four are arrested and charged with theft. On average, a criminal gang take a grand from each cloned card before the scam is discovered. It turns out this gang had stolen the details of more than 30 credit cards and just one operation. CCTV cameras have been put up to protect two cash points already targeted by fraudsters. They capture one man calmly walking to the machine inside a bank foyer and quickly fit in a skimmer device and a pin reading camera. Moments later, two other gang members fit a similar device to the second machine. As the bloke tests the equipment, an unsuspecting member of the public uses the first rigged ATM. The gang then leave and wait for more innocent punters to have their cards cloned. Later, one of the gang returns with a cloned card and starts to empty some innocent person's bank account of cash. As he walks down the road, he counts his ill-gotten gains. Last year, crooks managed to cream a shocking 96 million quid off unsuspecting people by cloning their cards. Finally, after a hard day relieving the public of their card details, the equipment is removed. Three days later, two of the gang, wearing different clothes, are spotted at another cash point out in the street. Put on high alert by the scam earlier in the week, 
CCTV operators follow their every move. They're calling the cops to check the pair out and the two are arrested as they move off down the road. The cloning of cards is one of the fastest growing criminal activities in the UK, but it's not only crafty fraudsters who are preying on card users. In Rochdale, this bloke crossing the town square has just spotted something. A young woman withdrawing money late at night and on her own. He creeps up and pretends to be queuing and waits patiently for his moment. Despite opting for a surprise attack, the weedy mugger's going nowhere. The woman is stronger than him and manages to hold on to her bag. After struggling for a few seconds, the street thief decides to leg it. In America, one card wasn't enough for these crooks. They decided to steal a whole machine. Unbelievably, they managed to break in, grab the ATM and get out in less than 10 seconds. In Wiltshire, three men have just burgled a post office and are now making a quick getaway in a white Vauxhall Omega. Yeah, I would suggest if you can keep uh, any vehicles from behind him at a distance. Uh, his driving is uh, somewhat erratic at this time of it. Yeah, the robbers are driving extremely dangerously, so to avoid any extra pressure, the pursuing cop cars are kept well back. QJ from 99, he's gone right by right, right to the end of Queensway. Uh, yeah, confirm, confirm, he's gone through temporary traffic lights on red to the offside, uh, continuing on the Sandridge Road out of town uh, towards Sandridge Hill. With the police cars out of sight, the burglars think they've made a clean getaway and decide to dump their car. Yeah, in to go, in to go, we've got a decamp, decamp, uh, side road in village. Uh, Occupants have now decamped for the vehicle, I'm going to try and follow the driver over. As the three give it legs, the chopper follows them up the track. Camp is in uh, the lane that goes to Manor Farm Round. Ground units scoop up two of them, but can't find the third runner. There's a large tree on the offside as they go towards Round from their location. There is a strong heat source in the hedgerow at that location of it. The burglar might have managed to disappear from the ground units, but he can't hide from the eye in the sky. Using a thermal image camera, the airborne crew spot him buried in the hedge and the officers on the ground are able to arrest him. When not on special operations, the proactive crews spread out across the Thames Valley working their own patch. East Berkshire is the home turf of Roma Bolsover and Ronnie Walsh, Tango Victor 3-3. They're soon called into an urgent job. Basically, there's a burglary in progress in Sunningdale, which is near to Ascot. Um, basically, offenders have been seen to jump over into a property and a neighbour's heard a window smash and believe they're still in the property. They need to get to the property quickly, but Sunningdale, home to Prince Andrew, isn't a usual hotspot for crime, and Ronnie and Roma have hardly ever been there. You got my book there, have a look. <laughs> Just as they sort themselves out, the situation changes. The burglars have sussed they've been spotted and have fled into a nearby forest. It's terrible when you don't know anyway, isn't it? <laughs> a huge manhunt is underway. Fifteen officers surround the forest while a dog handler is sent in to track the crooks. Best not to go in so the dog can track. 
because you don't want everyone in there and a dog will lose its senses. If it, as you can see, it's woodland, there would be very little people in there and uh, the dog just tracked from there, so it's a lot easier for the dogs rather than all of us just running in. It's best to contain the area with the helicopter so the X-ray Delta can track. All Tango Victor crews are trained to cooperate with dog units. Police dogs only follow the freshest scents, so it's vital that no one except the dog unit is in the forest. They've jumped over the line and gone into the countryside, and that's where the, the dog starts to track them. So he's in there? Yeah. Still. It's down from there. We are currently up here. So hopefully, I've got the whole area contained, just waiting for them to pop out, really. After 30 minutes, the waiting game starts to pay off. One's already been detained in this area, yeah. The uh, dog unit believes the other one's still in the area. Ten minutes later, and there's the first sign of burglar number two. Okay, the dog just located these trainers, so the offender's somewhere in here somewhere. If these are the robber's shoes, he won't be getting far. Uh, the dog handler's just arrested someone. Keep going, keep going. I ain't got your cuffs on, all right? Towards Ashley. Ashcott, over. Down. Burglar number two is busted. Despite dumping the shoes to throw the dog off his scent, he still couldn't get away. This house owner has installed security cameras all round his property. Good call. On average, every householder in England gets broken into at least once every 50 years. Unfortunately, it's not only the cameras which are keeping a close eye on his home. A minute after he's gone, three hooded youths appear at his door. One quick check of the door handle. They can't believe the look. The door is unlocked. They're in. Three minutes later and they're out again, carrying a safe full of jewellery and more than a grand in cash. Despite these pictures being given to the police, the thieves have never been caught. Watch the top left corner of this footage recorded by a security camera in a shop in the States. Ooh, I bet that hurt. The intruders just made his grand entrance through the ceiling. The doors and windows are secured with an alarm, but by smashing straight through the roof, this crook manages to beat the system. Next morning, all that's left for the shop owner is an empty till and an interesting surveillance tape. In Milton Keynes, the crackdown on the town's most persistent offenders is in full swing. Simon and Chris are following an iffy car. Car in front that just as it drove past, it's got five youngsters in it. It's coming back as having no tax. So we're just going to give it a tug, see what the score is. One out of every 15 cars on Britain's roads has got no tax or insurance. So it's no surprise that the Tango Victor units constantly have to deal with them. Hello, mate. Switch it off for a second. You might be our friend. Yeah. How long you had it? A couple of days. A couple of days. You insured it and everything? Huh? Have you insured it? It's on my dad's traders policy. Is it? You got a driving license? What's that? You got a driving license? No. Right, just step your seatbelt off me, old friend. Okay, you come with me a second. Get the camera off. Oh no, we won't. Get the camera off. Sight! The driver's just admitted to having no license. But one of the passengers isn't happy about the presence of our TV crew. Move away. You can't, you ain't got no right to put the yeah, camera we have. on us. No, you ain't. Get yes, the we have. camera off. Don't swear. Don't swear. Come here. What's your name? <laughs> right, Darren, let me tell you now, he can film where he likes when he's with us because he's in a public place. You've got absolutely no right to approach him like that. And if you do, I will arrest you. Do you understand me? What right have you got to put the camera on us? Because you're in a public place and he's filming what we do. With the angry passenger calmed down by Simon, Chris can focus on the driver. Okay, so don't believe it this moment. You've got your shorts or a license, have you? No, I ain't got a license. I told you. Take your full name, my old friend. With no insurance and no license, the bloke's a nightmare for any legal motorist and needs to be grounded. His volatile mate's in trouble as well. 
there's evidence of drug use. I know you from old, so uh, yeah. I'm just going to give you a search. Yeah, right, no, Section 23 of Misuse of Drugs. Problem. I appreciate no, you've told me you've got one pin in there. Is yeah. there any more pins, no, mate? No, there's not. No, good man. You'd be surprised how many people won't tell us. No, no, I wouldn't. I've got Epsi, I have to tell you, do you know what I mean? No if worries, you mate. Was to, you know, stab yourself with that. The passenger's cooperative. He's got no drugs on him, only an empty syringe. Now the driver's giving Chris a hard time. Right, now I need your own address, mate, or you're going to end up down the police station. Please don't fuck me about. No, okay. That's what I mean, you've got to be down to the force. That's what I'm saying. My actual, okay. I've got a flat. Where did your post go to? His car's seized and he's reported for having no insurance and no licence. But that's not all. Simon's just taken a look at the tax disc. The gentleman who was driving the Metro, um, there was no tax in the car or there's no tax for the car. However, it was displaying a tax disc um, for a different vehicle. What's that mean? No tax, no car tax. We'll let the DVLA know and they'll send you fine through to your house, all right? Right. Nice. So why are you taking that disc for? Because it don't belong to that car. Yeah, it's one of my dad's ones. Yeah, it should have been in the window. That should have just been sat on the... Well, how did it get in the window, then? It should have been sat on the thing. I don't know. Should have been sat on the thing? It should have been sat on the dash, there. Have you ever heard the phrase, when in hole, stop digging? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Cheerio then. Right. <laughs> so uh, he commits the offence there of fraudulent use of, of a vehicle excise licence. So what I'll now do is fill in a form and report those facts to the DVLA. And if they feel it's appropriate, they can then take further action against him, which could end up with him appearing in court for that offence. It's the same old story all over the world. When pulled over by cops, drivers get emotional, even in tough Texas. Yes, ma'am, you were speeding. No, sir, I wasn't. Ma'am, speed limit in here is only 30. It's 30? Well, um, <laughs> where was, was I going? 45 miles an hour. 45? Miss, this is going to be a citation issue not on your speed. Matter of fact, I need your insurance card. Please, please not can you, Look, spare me this time. I promise I will never speed on I need to see your again. insurance card, ma'am. Sir? So I guess that's not going to work, is it? No, ma'am. You know, I never could get... Here's my goddamn fucking driver's license card. Just take me in, okay? I'm tired of these goddamn fucking speeding tickets. Ma'am, just try to calm down. No! It's three! I can, I'm a single mother. Do you understand? I am a single mother. I have spent $300 in the past year on traffic tickets. I can't afford it. I'm getting ready to lose my fucking house. Man. Take me in! Please don't take us to jail. I'm not. Yes, he is. He's taking me to jail because I don't want to go with any more traffic. I don't have any fucking money, do you understand? Ma'am, stay in the car. Take me in. Come on back here with me. Take me in. Take me in. Shut your door. Come on back here. You take me in right now. You take me in. Stay in the car. Stay in the car. Stay in the car. I'm not going to take her to jail. Stay in the car. I don't want my I'm not to going to take her to jail. Stay in the car. I don't want my I can't to afford go. a goddamn ticket for going hardly anything <laughs> over the me speed limit. This way. Compose yourself now. I can't. You rip up that ticket and I'll compose my fucking self. You can shove that truck up your ass because I'm leaving right now. Ma'am, don't make me chase you down this road. Okay, don't take off. I'm telling you, don't take off. Well, what's going to happen? Going to throw me in jail for speeding? Huh? Is that what you're going to do? There's your insurance and your citation. And there's your courtesy letter. Finally, after 20 minutes, the relieved trooper is free to continue his patrol and to hopefully deal with a few less troublesome drivers. I don't know. She just got irate, man. <laughs> <laughs>